بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. هذه السورة is سورة المعون and سورة المعون uh, as ابن عطية said one of the scholars of Tafsir he said it's a Meccan surah by consensus. Uh, the name of the surah is Al Ma'un. Some called it Ara'ayta and some called it Ad Deen. And it was revealed after Surah Al Takathur and before Surah Al Kafirun. There is no uh, specific reason for the uh, revelation of the surah in totality. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ara'ayta alladhi yukadhibu bid deen. Have you seen the one who denies the recompense? Now, the word ara'ayta in Arabic is used for two different things. It's used to pose a question and it is also used as a way of um, making a person wonder, longing to know what's coming after this question. Uh, in the first form, which is the form of posing uh, or the first meaning of the two, posing a question, uh, it is, of course, here the, the, the question is addressed to our Prophet ﷺ. And it is to show how strange this person who is being uh, talked about is, who denies the recompense. A deen here is translated as recompense, just like Maliki Yawmi Deen in Fatiha. A deen here refers to everything that's going to take place on the day of resurrection resurrection, accountability, and recompense as a final uh, result of that day. Uh, now, Yukadhibu is uh, in Arabic fi'lun uh, mudari, which is present continuous, right? This is an indication that this is something that's continuous. He always denies. He always denies resurrection. He always denies recompense. Now, it is as if Allah Azza wa Jal is saying to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, have you seen this person? Have you seen him physically? Well, if you haven't seen him, if you can't recognize him, in other words, then here are his qualities through which you can recognize anyone who is described as a person who denies recompense, who denies resurrection, who denies being held to account by Allah in the hereafter. What are the qualities? For that is the one who repels, uh, drives away the orphan. It would have been expected to talk about one of the pillars of faith, Denying one of the pillars of faith, for example, to be the one who... But Allah Azza wa Jal here is, is addressing the issue from a different angle. Allah Azza wa Jal, and, and this is brilliant in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal is connecting faith with everything else. Islam is not just a set of rituals or some words we utter by our tongues, we say we believe in Allah, Ashhadu. No, no, no. Islam is a code of life, it's a, is a comprehensive religion. It's a, it's a general umbrella under which everything falls. Rituals, manners, interactions, belief, everything. So the first quality Allah Azza wa mentions is, فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَدُعُ الْيَتِينَ it is that one, that person whose heart, whose heart is so hard to the extent that he is harsh and aggressive and repels and drives away. Not just any person, an orphan. Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen said, an orphan is a person who lost his parents or one of them. 
And such a person is usually in need of support. He needs all types of support and especially moral support. He expects compassion from the community. He expects care and love. He expects a person who sees him to embrace him. Not to repel him. Not to turn him away aggressively. Because the, the word used in the verse, يدعو, is to push someone harshly and aggressively. Just like Allah Azza wa told us about those who will be thrown in hell. يَوْمَ يُدَعُونَ إِلَى نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ دَعَى On the day when they will be pushed into Jahannam in an aggressive push or an aggressive manner, harshly. Well, that's a punishment. But why should we treat an orphan as if we're punishing him while he is in fact in need of our love and compassion and care? The Prophet ﷺ said, if you want to heart, your heart to become soft, then wipe over, a head, over the head of an orphan. And this type of people deal aggressively and harshly with orphans. So, the first repulsive quality he has is that he's aggressive and heartless with orphans. The second one is, and does not encourage feeding the poor. He is so stingy. His denial of the hereafter made him hard-hearted and stingy. He neither feeds nor does he even encourage others to do so. He doesn't even enjoy the issue of being benevolent and kind to the poor. Uh, Sheikh Shankiti said, in commenting on these two different uh, two two verses of the surah, he said the the uh, the first one is a hideous quality of doing something, and the second one is a hideous quality of refraining from something. The first one is doing this harshness. The second one is refraining from kindness and notice Allah Azza wa is given these to be qualities of a person who denies the hereafter meaning whoever possesses these is in a dangerous situation because if he doesn't deny it can lead him to deny and he said if even if Islam did not encourage us or instruct us rather to be kind to orphans and to help needy people and poor people it's humane to act this way and inhumane to be otherwise then a sudden change happens after then the speech is different now so woe to those who pray who pray who pray Allah didn't say Woe to those who don't pray. No, it is for to those who do pray. But we don't stop here. We can't stop here. Wail, of course, as we've mentioned in different surahs, where the word wail was present, can either mean, who remembers? 
a valley in Jahannam or a threat of punishment or an indication of destruction or all of them together okay so how can this person become deserving of wail well the second one this the following verse tells us those who are heedless of their prayer now Ibn Abbas said, radiyallahu anhu arda. He said, it is out of the mercy of Allah that Allah said, an salatihim, of their prayer, walam yaqul fi salatihim, and did not say during the, their prayer, because he said, who doesn't think of something else other than salah during salah? It's rare that your mind doesn't start wandering around, isn't it? So had it been during Salah, then we would have all deserved wait. But Allah said, An. Now, how can someone be heedless of their prayer? The scholars said different things about this. They said it is referring to a person who's negligent about Salah altogether. Or he's someone who prays and then stops praying. Others said, like a Shinqiti rahmatullahi alayhi, he said, this refers to those who delay the prayer from its prescribed time or from the preferred time of prayer. What is the preferred time of prayer? As soon as the salah becomes due, that's the best time to pray. He said, those who delay it from this time are included. We ask Allah's protection. If this is talking about people who pray but delay it or are negligent, what about those who don't pray? What type of punishment are they going to get? If wail is for such people, others who don't pray at all, we get what? We ask Allah to make us steadfast on Salah. Now, the next statement of some of the scholars is actually deep and we need to reflect on it. He said, it also includes those who do the movements, say what they have to say during Salah, but their hearts are elsewhere. They don't lef- reflect on what they're doing. What they're doing is a bond, is a connection between them and Allah. They are not into that. And thus, their prayer has no impact on their hearts. That's included. When Salah becomes an exercise, like we see, unfortunately, in some of the masajid, for example, during taraweeh, you feel that you're doing an aerobic class instead of salah. Allahu Akbar, Sami Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Amin, Allahu You don't comprehend what you're doing. You can't get any fruits out of this type of salah. When a, a man was complained about to the Prophet وسلم, that he commits a certain sin, he asked, does he pray? They said, yes. He said, leave him. His prayer will stop him. That's the type of prayer we need to have. And the opposite is threatened with wife. الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاءُمْ Now, it is those who make show of their deeds. In other words, they pray in front of people. They give in front of people, so people say, oh, mashallah, he's generous. Oh, mashallah, look at how nice his prayer is. When you do that, 
You get nothing out of that good deed. Because Allah Azza wa Jal on the day of judgment as in the narration will say, go and get your reward from those to whom you perform the act of worship. You did something so Hussam can say, oh mashallah, nice, look how good, very pious. Or Mujib can say, this. no, no, no. We don't do that. We shouldn't do that. Our prayers, our acts of worship should only be done and purely done for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Sincerity, ikhlas is something that is mandatory for the acceptance of the deed. One may ask, what if someone does something sincerely for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal? But then people praise him, for example. And this happens a lot in fundraising uh, dinners or gatherings or what have you, functions. They would say, okay, the masjid needs this. And a brother would raise ha his hand and say, uh, I pledge to pay $50,000 or pounds or euros or reals or whatever. Right? And he's doing it sincerely for the sake of Allah. And he doesn't care about what people think. But someone walks up to him after the function and says, Zakallah khair, brother, mashallah, very well done. May Allah reward you. It is that we're not machines. He is going to feel something about it. He's going to feel that he's done something good. Well, that's not a problem. The Prophet wasallam was asked about that. And this is reported by Muslim. He said, he was asked, a person does something good, an act of virtue, and then is praised about it by others. He said, Ajilu Bushra al Muslim. He said, This is glad tidings that has been hastened for him. Ibn al Jawzi, Rahmatullah Ali, he said, This praise that he received is glad tidings that his, that his deed is being accepted. And now he said, It is a sign of the pleasure of Allah. But when you do something for people, as the Prophet وسلم, said, and this is in Bukhari and Muslim, he said, Man samma samma Allahu bihi. Whoever uh, does something so people can hear about it and praise him for it. Then, samma Allahu bihi. I'll explain this. Woman ra'a, ra'a Allahu bihi. And whoever does something so people can see him, samma is from hearing and ra'a from from his seeing. So people can see him and thus praise him for it. mean They both mean the same thing. They mean Allah Azza wa Jal will expose him. Will expose his intention. He will make it known to people that this guy wasn't sincere. We ask Allah's protection. This is disgraceful. When you do something and then discover that everybody knew what's inside. Notice Allah Azza wa is listing different qualities of those who do not believe, who deny recompense, who deny the day of judgment, who deny resurrection. وَيَمْنَعُونَ الْمَاعُونَ And withhold simple assistance. Ibn Kathir said, They neither performed their salah well, nor did they be a source of goodness and assistance to people. Notice the, the, uh, the surah connected faith with Benevolence, manners, interactions with people, and then connected salah as a symbol of acts of worship to, again, benevolence, kindness, being understanding. Now, the type of 
assistance mentioned here can be one of two things. It's either something that is essential to people and thus refraining or withholding is haram. For example, if a, if a person walks up to you and say, I need to drink water or else I might die out of thirst. I haven't drunk for whatever number of days. You cannot, in Islam, you cannot withhold, you cannot refrain from doing that or else you're sinful. Anything else other than that, a person misses out on the good reward, but he is not sinful. However, he is risking being or possessing a quality of those who are mentioned in this surah. These qualities are dangerous qualities that can re lead to denying. And vice versa, denying will make a person possess such qualities. You see how they're connected together. If you deny, if a person denies, well, if someone denies Allah's resurrection and recompense, then he will do everything evil. He will do all obnoxious acts and possess the worst and most hideous qualities. This is one side. The other side is, those who possess this are risking themselves to be led to denial. Sheikh al Uthaymeen has a beautiful statement he said, Al Ma'asi Baridul Kufr. Sins are the, the messenger that would lead you to Kufr, meaning they're step by step can deviate you and drift you off of the path until you find yourself. If you don't stop yourself, you find yourself totally out of the fold of Islam. Again, brothers and sisters. As Shaykh al Uthaymeen said, Quran is not meant for us to only recite it or understand the meaning of the vocab in it, but rather to put it to practice, to act upon it. We ask Allah's help to act upon the Quran. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب